Hey, what's up, everybody? A little bit of an equity analyst tip for you, how to model earnings per share and earnings per share growth rate. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah, and I am a CFA charter holder. I used to work in equity research at Lehman Brothers, and I have an MBA in quant finance. On this channel, I discuss portfolio management and equity research career tips. So please subscribe and let's party. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about how to model EPS and EPS growth rate. Now you might need to be doing this if you have an interview coming up. And if you do, by the way, check out the emergency interview kit in the link below. The emergency interview kit is going to tell you what to do before, after, and during any type of equity research or portfolio management interview. And you can just check it out in the link below. Also, if you are interviewing for equity research, or if you're looking to interview, or if you just want to get a job in portfolio management or equity research, check out my models. They are free. You can download them also in the link below. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is EPS and what is EPS growth rate. And then I'm going to tell you how it's normally done and how you really should be doing it if you want to stand out from the crowd in an equity research interview. So first, what is EPS? I'm actually going to show you on a model. Okay, so I'm going to show you on an income statement in, a, in an actual model, how to model out EPS and how to model out the EPS growth rate. So you start with revenues. Now you're just going to go by whatever the company's income statement is, however they break out their um, figures you can follow them, but then sometimes you may have to make adjustments because sometimes companies report stuff in weird ways. And I'll discuss why they do that in a minute. But basically, you're going to look at their income statement and see how it's reported. You're going to take their revenues, subtract out expenses, and then you're going to basically be left with their income from operations um, or EBIT. And then you're going to take out the interest expense and you're going to take out the taxes and this will leave you with net income. Now you take that and in order to arrive at basic EPS, you're going to take the net income and you're going to take the amount of weighted shares outstanding, um, basic shares outstanding, and you're just going to divide the net income by that. If you want basic EPS, if you want diluted EPS, you're going to take the um, weighted shares outstanding included diluted, and you're going to put that in the denominator of the fraction. So EPS basic and EPS diluted. And if you look at EPS over time, you could see the EPS growth rate. Now, by the way, just a note about the EPS growth rate. Normally what the analysts report is a little bit inflated. That's just a general statement. You know, the sell side tends to be eternally optimistic about what the future looks like for companies. So when you see the consensus and you see what it's projected out to be by the street, just understand that you're, you'll normally have to adjust the EPS down because it's normally a little bit more rosy of a picture than what it ends up being in reality. So now that we covered what EPS is, I wanted to just tell you about why it's important and why you need to have a grasp of it if you're going to become an equity analyst. So EPS and EPS growth are important because essentially EPS expresses how profitable a company is. A company can have all the revenue in the world. They could be selling like there's no tomorrow, but at the end of the day, if it doesn't come down to their bottom line, if it doesn't result in a net profit and, an, and a growth rate of net profit, with, which is essentially what EPS growth rate measures, then it's not really going to be a great company. You're going to be putting all this effort into creating a product and selling it, but then essentially have nothing to show for it as a company, right? So um, I want you to look at when you're looking at EPS and looking at EPS growth rate, and you need to talk about it in an interview or if you're just looking to assess companies um, because you want to become an equity analyst and you're thinking about interviewing, but you haven't yet, it's useful to think about how many earnings adjustments there are and how many of them are non-GAAP adjustments. This is just talking about earnings quality. Earnings in general is something that's very easy for companies to manipulate. 
They, um, for example, can do a lot of issuances of stock or they can do buybacks. So don't just look at if they're meeting the consensus or not. And the consensus is what the street thinks that the company is going to declare as earnings on the reporting date. Like, don't just look at that. Look at what essentially is the earnings expressing, because in some cases, and we all know the cases where there's been outright fraud, there are cases where the earnings really is presenting a picture of the company that's not completely truthful. So as an analyst, you want to be knowledgeable about that. You want to look at that. Um, the other thing, and this is not really something that a lot of equity analysts will do, but this would just be like a showstopper in an interview, is that you should speak with people that are involved with the company, like vendors, people that sell products to the company, you know, the competitors, the customers. What do they think about the industry growth rate? Like, what do they understand about the growth trends? And don't go so much by the models all the time, because like I said, the models can be gamed. So the company can be saying the whole world about what they think their growth rate is going to be, but whether or not they hit it depends upon, in some cases, factors that they may not even realize as a company. And so if you can find that out, if you can be that sleuth and, and if you can get that information and hey, look, this is what the industry really looks like. It might not be what the company is talking about in their in their earnings calls, but this is what I think because I spoke with their three major competitors, because I spoke with the three vendors that in that are in their supply chain and, and supply in what their basic materials are that for them producing their product, right? Um, this will help you to not be like everybody else and not to be short-term thinking, but rather long-term taking a bigger picture and that's really important as an equity analyst if you want to be successful in an equity analyst interview. And it also could probably help you to predict what the EPS growth rate is going to be because you'll have that much of a better concept of what the industry growth rate really does look like. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. And again, like I said, please download the emergency interview kit if you're looking to learn about how to interview well for these positions. And I would really love for you also to download my models. And those are for free, the models. You really need to be able to model if you're going for one of these interviews. So thank you. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.